We've come to Mount Gilboa here in the Galilee on an absolutely beautiful spring day. What a gorgeous scene we found when we topped this hill. There's a lot of history here too. This is where Saul and his sons died, the Bible tells us. Now here's, here's the way that worked out. Saul was the king right before David. And in, as Saul constantly was in battle with the Philistines, it came to pass that the Philistines, the Bible tells us, moved all the way into the Jezreel Valley. Now, that's, this is the Jezreel Valley. They were threatening the Israelites. And so Saul has to come with his forces here to try to head them off. But as they fight the battle, things go very poorly, and all of the Israelites run right up the hill of Mount Gilboa looking for safety. Now, that makes perfect sense. As you see the valley, it's nice and flat. It's a good place for two armies to meet, to collide. You will have a fight down there. And as a matter of fact, more battles have been fought in the Jezreel Valley than any other place on earth. That's another story for another day. The Israelites ran up this mountain looking for cover. The Philistines chased them, concentrating on Saul and his sons. And, and that's where Saul and his sons died. They took the bodies of Saul and his sons and fastened them to the wall of Beit Shan. Now, Beit Shan is in the distance. It's so hazy today, we can't see Beit Shan from here, but you could on a clear day. It's a reasonable distance. Now, here's what I, I would say, say about this whole, this whole beautiful scene this morning. This is another case of biblical geography being proved accurate. So what I'm saying is the writers of this story gave all kinds of details about the where of the story. For instance, on the last night of his life, Saul went to a witch at Endor. Not just he went to a witch, but at Endor. Well, Endor is right through the haze in this direction. It, and, and here's Gilboa. It makes perfect sense. There's Beit Shan. It all matches up. You know, as I read the Bible and as I walk through the land, that story happens over and over and over again. There, there's a case to be made for being able to believe the stories of the Bible simply by the fact that the writers constantly gave us accurate geographic reference points. To me, it's a case of you're free to take your mind to the Bible. You're free to go with your questions. But you can't write this book off as some kind of fictional religious fairy tale. There's too much rock solid evidence, mountain solid evidence, valley solid evidence to write off the Bible. So here's the deal, that, that's, that's the kind of thing we find all along the way. Everywhere we go, we find the, the record of the Bible to be to matched up with the land of the Bible. And I hope you're enjoying your walk through Israel with us. Uh, we're certainly having a good time. I'm Andy Cook, helping you experience Israel right now. <laughs>